Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to start off the process of repairing the power hammer and we're going to start with this. This is the ram that goes up and down. Uh, it's cracked along here and it is cracked along the top. Initially I was thinking I'm going to just rebuild the whole thing and fabricate it. But I'm going to try weld it. I do have silicon bronze wire and my welder does do silicon bronze. So I'm thinking this is like a perfect opportunity to try and weld cast. So I'm going to wire brush all of this and take it all apart and see the actual uh, parts that I need to weld. Um, and it might go well, and if it doesn't, I have to fabricate something, but I'm willing to try this, and I think it'll be a fun project. So that's us finished wire brushing it and it just makes me so sad to see it broken and I feel so sorry for the guy that I bought off. Uh, so I'm going to grind some chamfers in the top parts here and then I'm going to weld them at the top. Uh, this, I'm going to stick the bolts back in on this and then grind bigger chamfers around it and then we're going to weld in with a silicon bronze around the edges, then take them bolts out, drill new holes, uh, put in bolts and then probably weld them up as well. Uh, just to make it a bit more beefy. Um, so quick fix really, I've done it a day, no bother. I'm only slightly nervous because I haven't done this before. So if you're expecting like, this is how you do it step, type, step by step, uh, this isn't the video. <laughs> Luckily it's really easy to get spare parts online, right? Well, we heated up for about 45 minutes and then we welded it and uh, I don't know how it's gonna go. It, it's already broken, so I'm like, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. So it, it kind of looks like it's bonded. Uh, we heated up pretty much till it was a dull red around this part and then welded it. But I think it was might have been too cold on this part. I, as I was starting to weld, there was like, I should have like jumped on immediately. <sighs> ah, we'll just have to see. So what we're doing now, we finished welding that up. It's still actually blisteringly hot, so I don't want to touch it, but we put the arms in and I wanted to know the size of the spring in here because I didn't know if there was another coil in there. Uh, so we put it in and we think there is another coil in there. So it just gives us the rough size for making the new spring. So it's got to be around about that much more. So maybe like a hundred mil uh, and then, ooh and then we'll start forging a new spring. To do that, I'm gonna heat up this entire spring and we're gonna reduce the diameter of it by twisting it around on a bar. And then when it's all together, we're gonna to pull it apart and it's gonna be even spaces between the coils. Trust the old clamp, eh? That's really warm. So now the coil's all nice and even, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the vise and then pull it out with both tongs and then I'll get the separation between the springs, each coil. So the important part here I reckon was to make it as even heat as possible. So I was turning it in the forge just before this moment and now I'm going to pull it out. And that's really even as it is, I don't actually think we'll need to edit that, I'm incredible. So now that is the top ram done. Uh, we're going to be making a bottom mounting plate for the dies 
for the actual power hammer. We're going to be doing that by using a forklift fork and we're going to need to drill a hole right the way through. And to do that, we're going to be using a lathe. I decided to splash out and spend 600 quid on a mini lathe. 600 quid! Look at this bad boy. She's not small, eh? Just for reference, I'm about five foot two. Mate. Come on, give me the extra You're inch. Five, Come mate. on, five ten. I shrunk, all right? It's cold in Scotland. So I've slapped a bit of forklift fog in the forge oak truck. Uh, we're going to drill out the center hole using a drilling attachment, and we're just going to use the power feed, and we just throw in about a 30 mil drill bit. Um, and then we're going to bore it out. While we're here, we're going to turn down the pin that's going to go inside the forklift fork and then go inside the actual base of the power hammer. I'm going to turn it down and cut through it. Right, it's a bit cold. Uh, we've decided not to use that bit of forklift fog. We're going to use this, which is the original bottom plate that holds the die in. And, but we still need to drill a hole for that pin that goes in it. Uh, to do that last time we used a lathe. But it's so cold and miserable and I can't be bothered changing the forge jaw. So we're going to just go to Michael's and drill out with a proper drill. <laughs> These parts are the bits that go on the front of the power hammer and we were originally going to weld them on but to do that I'd have to heat up the whole power hammer and I don't know if I want to set a fire underneath it and heat up the whole thing. I think that would just be absolutely insane and if I broke it at that point after doing all this work I would be rather upset. So instead we're just going to do the exact same thing except we're going to use higher quality bolts and bigger bolts. So we're going to tap them in and then after we've done that we're going to weld up these two parts so they're one bit and then I'm going to weld the bolts in because I never wanted to come out. Bada bing bada boo, done. So if you've ever broke one of these in the hole, you're not holding your tongue right. That's why you broke it. You have to hold it like this. And if you don't, you snap it pretty much immediately. So I didn't have a 17mm hex, so you just use a 10mm bolt and you shove it in there. It works perfectly. I suppose you can't put as much torque on it, but it should be pretty good. So that is the end of part two. We finished fabricating all the parts and they came out really, really well. The brazing uh, came out so much better than I thought it would and I think it'll actually hold up to the test of time, but we'll find out probably in the next one uh, where we will lacquer it and put the base on. It's not lacquered already. <laughs> Whoops. I did get fired, but that was because I'm such a horrible person to work with, not because I couldn't fabricate. <laughs> I do remember this forger chuck being bigger, but it is pretty cold outside. <laughs>